the space shooter. Same name, different game, Gradius. I started Same Name Different Game a little more than three years ago. Now last year was a little light and I'm very sorry about that, but I'm back. New theme song, new look, same show. Now when I started, I started with Life Force and Salamander. So now that we're getting restarted, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the game that set the standard for horizontal shooting action, Gradius. But as always, we'll start with a little history. The first forced side-scrolling shooter was a game called Scramble, made by Konami and released in 1981. It was widely acclaimed at the time and followed by another game called Super Cobra later the same year. Konami was making a mint with these games, and four years later, in 1985, they put out the game-changing Gradius in the arcade. Gradius did gangbusters for Konami in the arcade. It earned them a ton of money. And 1985 was also the year that the Nintendo Entertainment System came to the US. So it was only a matter of time before Gradius, the arcade hit, was ported to become Gradius, the NES hit. And in 1986, that's exactly what happened, bringing us to the first game for this episode, Gradius on the NES. Konami developed Gradius in-house and published it on the NES. It was among their first NES releases and was a huge hit. As a port, it's not bad, but given the arcade tech available at the time compared to the home, it's hardly arcade perfect. In the years that followed, Gradius was released on a multitude of platforms, microcomputers, you name it. The game was everywhere. And in 1991, Konami finally reached a deal to publish games for the PC Engine, the Japanese TurboGrafx-16. The first game they released? Gradius. So this is going to be our second game for this episode. Now keep in mind, this game was released a full six years after the original arcade release of Gradius. Gradius on the PC Engine never came to the US TurboGrafx. In fact, none of Konami's PC Engine games did. This is particularly tragic as the PC Engine version of Gradius is the best version of the game. I'll say that again, and I know I usually say this for the end, but it bears repeating. The PC Engine version of Gradius is the best version of Gradius, hands down, and yes, that includes the arcade original. Now, let's go ahead and compare these two. The first thing you'll notice is that one of these has an opening video and the other doesn't. The NES version will go to a demo if the screen is left idle long enough. The second thing you'll notice is the graphics. Naturally, the PC Engine is going to annihilate the NES in this department, but the NES game still looks good, especially for a game that came out so early in the system's lifespan. Another thing you'll notice is that, true to the arcade version, the PC Engine version's stages scroll up and down a little bit. The NES was long thought incapable of scrolling in two directions at one time, and it wasn't until a few years later that enterprising programmers figured out how to trick it to make it work in games like Super Mario 3. But at the time of Gradius' release, it was impossible. You see, this show is both fun and educational. The next thing you'll notice is that a fully powered up ship in the PC Engine game looks a little different than the NES one. We looked at this in Salamander and Life Force as well, and it's for the same reason. The NES had much greater memory limitations, and as such, couldn't allow for four options, so you can only get two. Adding two more options to the player's ship would have increased firepower and reduced the number of enemies possible on screen, or caused massive slowdown. Both of these scenarios result in a lower difficulty and, well, 
we couldn't have that. Speaking of, Gradius is renowned for its difficulty, and that reputation is earned. This game, the NES version of Gradius, is harder than either Contra or Life Force in my opinion. Hell, it's almost as hard as Ninja Gaiden. They do throw you a few bones though. The first is the infamous Konami code. While it's sometimes referred to as the Contra code, it did appear here first. Well in case you don't know it, I'll let Don Nauert, captain of the US video game team, explain it to you. To get full firepower and Gradius, get the power pill for speed up. Pause, go up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. You now have full firepower. Thanks, Don. The other big thing they throw in is warps. If you meet certain conditions, you can skip stages 2, 3, or 4. But the conditions are kind of obtuse, and even when you know them, they're tough to meet. But that's about it. No 30 life trick, and no continues. There's a code that will allow you one continue, but that's it, and it doesn't always work. Now, PC Engine Gradius is no cakewalk, but it is a lot easier by comparison. It retains the full power-up code, it also adds a 30 life trick, which is not the Konami code. More than all of that though, the PC Engine version is just a little more fair, for lack of a better word. Your starting speed is a bit faster than the NES version, and you can carry four options. You also get a visual representation of when you're going to lose your shield. It gets smaller and smaller, and turns red when it has only one hit remaining. The NES version gives you no such courtesy. However, despite having the same appearance of two orbs in front of your ship, the NES shield inexplicably protects you on all sides. You can back into enemies with a shield in the NES version, and not only do you not die, it will kill them, but it takes a hit off your remaining shield power, of course. Oh, and the thing that really tips the scales really just nudges the PC Engine version over the edge, making it the best version of Gradius. It contains an additional stage. All of Konami's shooters, except for Salamander, were given an extra stage when they were brought to the PC Engine. In this case, it actually appeared first in the MSX home computer version of Gradius, but it's cleaned up and smoothed out for the PC Engine version. It's this weird space graveyard with killer dinosaur skeletons. It's a bunch of fun, and again, not seen in any other version besides the MSX. Now we already talked about the graphics, but let's talk about the sound. The PC Engine version is of course technically superior, being on a more advanced system with a beefier sound chip, but the NES version definitely has its charms, and I like NES chiptune music a lot. The biggest problem with the NES version though is that in some places, the music seems to be using all of the sound channels, so the sound effects cut out. The other thing is that in both versions, really, the Gradius soundtrack just isn't much to write home about. I mean, it's not bad, but... It just, you know, I, I, what can I say? I guess the Konami Kukeha Club just hadn't hit their stride yet when they did Gradius. Still, let's take a listen.
All right, I know I already gave it away, but I'm gonna give the edge anyways. It's, um, it's the PC Engine version by Country Mile. It's no contest. But the big thing and the thing that I really learned in the process of making this video is that Gradius just doesn't really hold up anymore. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the forerunner to a huge genre, one of my favorite genres of video game. And it did a lot of innovative, great, interesting, awesome things, but almost all of those things have been done better since, either by one of Gradius's sequels or spin-offs or games from another company. Our type would come out a couple years after the original release of Gradius. That game is amazing. It had a line of sequels throughout the 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit era. You've got games in this genre that just blow away what Gradius did. Coming after Scramble, it's a huge step up. But now when you compare it to Salamander, Proteus, you know, any of the R-type games, Einhander, stuff like that, it just falls a little flat. Still, again, it is a classic, and if you've never played it, you definitely owe it to yourself to see the roots of the genre. But in the wake of all those things and Kickstarter and indie game revivals of, of this style of game, it's a tough recommendation, especially when you consider that while the NES version is pretty cheap, you can get a copy for five to ten dollars for card only, the PC Engine version is a little more steep and will run you between 20 and 30 and never got a US release, so you need either um, a modified Turbo Graphics or an actual PC Engine system. But thank you for joining me for the very first episode of Same Name Different Game Cycle 2, and Please make sure that if you enjoyed the video, you like and subscribe and all that stuff. And check out on thestick.com for tons of other content we have going on there. And I'll see you next time for our annual WrestleMania special. Thanks for watching. See you then.